in your field up. Maskell's coming with the FIFA, FIFA, FIFA. If you like your babysitting comedies all cherry bombed up with unfunny racist stereotypes, annoying child actors, recycled gags from other babysitting comedies, and actor Sam Rockwell doing a Martin Scorsese version of his Justin Hammer character from Iron Man 2, we've got all that and much, much more with The Sitter. And before we flush it, we're going to take it out and play with it a little. We're here to flush it, so you don't have to see it. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. I am on tonight, your head cinematic flusher right here in the restroom. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-cinematic flushers, Midwest movie mogul, Colleen Griffin. Hey, hey, hey. And raging Buddha B movie queen, Nora Crest. What's up? Joining us as part of our extended co-flushing team this time out is an online critic for MovieBuzzers.com, author, and a former co-cinematic flusher right here in the restroom. Please welcome back. Fierce film reviewer, Chris Anger. Hello. <laughs> I just sound like a Muppet. She's proper. She's a proper lady. Be nice. My second job. Every time Raging Buddha B-Movie Queen Nora Crest spends some time in our stall and reads the writing on the restroom wall, she's never quite the same. Let's see who turns up in this week's Raging Buddha Stats. Yo, this here is soul, baby. And I'm gonna tell you what's up with this fucked up mess of a film called The Sitter. Some genius type in Hollywood was so damn bored with trying to come up with some original funkadelic cinematic stuff that he reached into the oldest bag of tricks, the remake. This heinous, unfunny, completely outlandish and improbable hunk of crap is supposed to be a remake of 1987's classic Adventures in Babysitting. Thank you, Brian Gatewood and Alessandro Tanaka for shitting on yet another 80s classic with this piece of steamy shit. Somehow, they made $30 million. Peace out. I am so, baby. And these are the stats. Phil should have been called either Adventures in Babyshitting, The Babyshitter's Club, or... Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. <laughs> oh, man. I, I can't I, believe we actually saw the same one. Oh, you got the same thing? I am losing my head. Uh, this film is what happens when you let Jonah Hill eat the entire craft services table and then forget to tell him to be funny on camera. Um, he's except, not meant to be funny. That's the point. He's the really? Straight, he's not. He's he, was, he is the straight man. I don't know about that. Basically, he's just playing See, himself. He literally like pulled green. out of bed. Fucking, he's probably wearing his fucking pajamas for the whole movie. Pretty much. <laughs> was this Hill's uh, pre-lose a shit ton of weight to look like a serial killer film? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then he gained it all <laughs> back. Yeah, but thank God, though. I thank God he, yeah, thank God he gained it back because he looks much. I know. No, no. He's lost it again. He yo-yos like Janet Jackson. <laughs> well, he had to. That's sad. Nice. Poor Janet. R.I.P. I think Jonah has an a, like a internal contest of who is the biggest douchebag he can co-star with. <laughs> well, He's that... reached it with Miles Teller. Ten bucks says even Danny McBride passed on this film because the lead character was too much of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He really just is such an unlikable guy in this film, and that's really kind of the the, the whole framework which no, we're doing this. I don't See, he's but I kind of feel like he sad. turns. I, he's fat and depressed. His daddy doesn't yeah, love exactly. him. I don't think he's an asshole. He's I just, sad. Oh, he's kind he's of sad. sad, sorry sack of shit. He know. needs a hug. <laughs> I would give him a hug. <laughs> this film is like being completely left out of a joke between the screenwriters and the director. That's the feeling I got is I didn't quite well, get it. Well, first of all, it's obviously a 90s inside joke because the film opens with Color Me Bad's classic, uh, I want to say. I know, the film, but the film's 2011. The I know, movie. but it's like, basically, I thought, is this movie taking place in the 90s? And then I was like, no. But then I got thrown off again with all the weird 90s TVs all over the rich people. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. box but TVs everywhere. It's supposed yeah. to be right now because they have cell phones. So okay. obviously it can't be the 90s. Flip as, phones. As, I know, the flip phones. Those were awesome. Well, they we all had those. Give me my Razorbacks. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're not even racers. They like, didn't even have the sidekick, and that made me sad. Now stop with the sidekick. We already flushed that in one film. We don't need to. <laughs> I'm going to send you a sidekick for Christmas. I, I hope so. It um, reminds me of uh, the SNL reruns. Uh, what, this film or the sidekick? No, the... Uh, <laughs> I want to sex you up by coming. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Because my mom heard it and she was like, "Who is that?" <laughs> <laughs> nice guys really do eat the best pussy. Uh, the most horrifying image in the film occurs at only the one minute mark, as we see Jonah Hill eating out an attractive blonde actress. Uh, in this case, Ari Grainer. She's not that attractive. She uh, resembles a Jennifer but Lawrence's. She's a good actress. No, she resembles Jennifer Lawrence's less successful sister. That's what I thought. Uh, did anyone else's vagina dry up and shrivel away at this point? Because I know mine yes. did. Mine is on vacation. Aww. I know. Your vagina really did. Yeah, your, got, your vagina got angry. Anger? Well, this hurts anger. So. Well. Yeah. No. Here, 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 it's but anger. Her, her vagina was probably in the other room not watching a film. <laughs> this was, I wonder if that actress got stunt pay to be in this scene because that was pretty gross, guys. But was, can I just say something? It was totally fake when they cut. You know, we right. have seen her face and she's moaning and she's on the pillow. <laughs> and then as soon as they cut to the wide shot, he's like jumping out of her vagina like it's on fire. biting his face <laughs> off. <laughs> Why was yeah. it? It was a Red Bull. It gave him wings. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> also, why is his mouth not covered in pussy juice? I think that oh, was a He did. Yeah, he he wiped it away. Do that, so. uh, let's get it all over your sad. face. Let's get it all over your face. You don't just get it right. Well, never mind. Not, not every girl squirt. Never been kissed already did that joke. We oh, don't did need that. Uh, is it really from another film? I mean, sure, it's from many films. It's a, well, yeah. You know what? No, it, this whole thing was from American Pie. Where he goes down on her and then she won't give yes, him Yes, and then he's uh, like, oh, okay, I get it. Thing. Now she'll let me fuck her. Why is Hill also dressed like a fat lumberjack? Because he was splitting fresh pine with his mouth. Hey oh. Uh, Damn. No, I know. Uh, I wonder if she had the car fresheners ooh. hanging off. Be honest, this is what you're <laughs> this is what you're doing wrong. If you're operating, you know, down there like it's a pine tree, I'm pretty uh, sure uh, your yeah. success rate is about zero. Oh, that's a good point. It is zero. Yeah. Okay. You should probably that. look up a different technique. Let me write that down. Yeah. Keep Take that. some notes. All right. And a problem is even if either whether a heavyweight Jonah Hill or, or thin Jonah Hill, you still don't want to fuck I'm him. I'm not attracted to either. No, it doesn't even bro. matter. It's not his weight. It's his personality. Maybe that's it. It's terrible. I would not have any article of clothing off in the same room as Jonah Hill. I'd probably have like extra coats. Yeah. So I think I don't him. know. It depends on what he could do. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh no! And it really I depends on what he could do for my you career. Got with anger, it's always a sliding scale. It's always a sliding scale with anger. As, <laughs> as soon as Jonah Hill opens his mouth, it doesn't matter what he does. Okay, you're out. I can't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so to recap the plot, there's not really much of a plot here going on. He is giving her, her this woman who he hopes to fuck. What is he giving her? He's eating her. Oh, that, that, no, okay. Oh. Okay. And she doesn't want to return. You know how this goes, folks. It's, Who it's, says cool yes. beans after <laughs> orgasm? I say cool beans all the time. Oh, after you orgasm? Yeah, but after an orgasm? After, probably. What's your first reaction? Cool beans. I, I have, actually. Oh, geez. Well, that, that, yeah, yeah. I had the guy on the back. Cool beans. I got to go. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Maybe we're asking questions we don't but really know the answer. She makes him think he's got a chance. <laughs> no, he doesn't have a chance. Are there really women that are going to allow some no. guy who clearly looks nope. like he has bad hygiene? Yes, he does. Put nope. in their face in their vagina. No. And then just be like, see ya, bro. Thanks for the hookup. I would have to pay attention if he brushed his teeth. So, like, <laughs> I'm just saying, his I mean, I'm kind of good to go. does not have good hygiene. And that's a no no for me. Like, you better be clean. All right. I am crossing my legs. As I bet you are. As as right now. Right now. I am too. Uh, was anyone else <laughs> laughing at the uh, Hill riding a bike while a rap song was playing over the opening credits? Anyone? Oh my, uh, Gangsta. What song is that? See, nobody knows. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. No, but I know the words. No, I didn't know. I just didn't know. I know, because we were just talking about this off mic, and so I thought you guys knew all the songs. No, that, that wasn't the, uh, no, that wasn't they riding in the car. That was the Far Side song. No, no, I'm asking what the song is when he's on this bike here at the four-minute mark. Is nobody that the one you're talking about? Yeah, when he's riding the bike at the beginning here. Nobody knows that song? The, the second one, I think, was Children's Story by Slick Rick. Ooh, Slick Rick. Oh, it's, it's an old one. Oh, I knew it was an old one. Yes. Story. I mean, they have so many a lot rap of... songs actually, in this movie. Actually, I was trying to understand. Apparently, he went to like an all black high school. Actually, <laughs> no, actually, it made me wonder how did they get the money for this? 
what? Well, they got Slick Rick song. They got yeah. the Color Me Bad song. They That's got a I want to know what the, the budget was because there's a lot of like top line stuff here. I mean, they even got a Mozart song. I mean, that's. Right, well, that's, no, that's I thought they were going to play The Choice Is Yours. They should have played Eat It during that song where he's giving a oral sex. Oh. Oh, I hate oh. You. Uh, That would have been great. So. <laughs> Have you started looking for a job yet? Uh, just once, it would be nice to see a functioning adult have a wild misadventure instead of a standard loser screenwriter's a toss our way. Um, his mother comes home, and of course, he's unemployed. No surprise. He's on a bike. He doesn't even have a car, and he's still living with his mother. He's got a DUI. Living with his mother. Yeah, we'll find out about that. Why is his mother dressed in an awful Hawaiian dress like she's about to start her shift at a tiki bar? Because she's his poor. And she's she's alone. Is. She wants Who to feel fun. Yeah. She's over, you know. <laughs> just because, anger, just because you have this dress. Uh, you should, I no, do have that I, dress. <laughs> I wear it to work. Yeah. <laughs> Pollo Tropical? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why does everybody from Friends age so well? Is that Friends? Jessica Hecht is, plays the mother, right? Jessica Hecht. Yes. She plays uh, the one who Ross's wife left her for. Oh, really? Ah, uh, oh. uh, yes, she did. That a-hole gave me the greatest gift in the world. Crabs? Uh, it's always hard to get behind Aww. a character when he's a, an obnoxious asshole. We mentioned this earlier. However, it's easy to get behind Jonah Hill because he was so big in this film. Hey-oh! Oh. All right. Really? For Fat Joe. Well, I, well, I, hey! To... <laughs> Diabetes oh. is not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. There's not even one scene of him eating. Yeah, I think you're rightfully correct on that. They're actually so he's just like starving out. Of kids. That's because he was fully ate all the crafts. And he doesn't even feed the kids. Eating. He's a sh- He's a shitty babysitter. Well, we haven't even got to that yet. But anyway, she. So Fred. Then he said. Then there's a Noah. Can you get off the phone? Who the hell sells a landline in 2011? It's like, oh, no, you'd be surprised. Landline, um, I have. Tea. And we mentioned this earlier, uh, Chris. I said it was like the director, David Gordon Green, made an offensive remake of Adventures in Babysitting or Shitting and forgot, to, and forgot to update everything from modern times. This is the remake of Adventures yeah. in Babysitting. Because we've been coming around this. This is like we thought this was filmed in the 90s because That's of the music and the way. Right, killed the, me. Right. Yeah. We got stuff like this, like a landline. Well, the televisions killed me. Oh, I mean, landline. I was like, I didn't understand where I was. Do you think this was one of the scripts that's been floating around Hollywood? Do you think this was just one of those? It actually was that on a list matter. of like greatest scripts that didn't get made in like 2009 or some shit. Oh, so people what? were liking this script, Ugh. but then it finally got me. I don't understand what there is to like about it. I don't know either. All right, so. You know what would have been really cool is if the mom was Elizabeth Shue. Oh, that would yes. so, I could've... That would have actually been funnier. The movie would have sucked still, but that would have been a bright spot, yeah, instead of a Jessica Hecht. All right. So mm-hmm. the, the genesis is she has to go on a date. In order to make the date, she's asking her idiot son to babysit the three kids that she was going to babysit um, at this friend's house, whatever. Okay, so that's the setup. Who can't even get off his ass and get the phone. Right. Uh, that was the whole joke with the phone, which I kind of blew, but it's all right. Uh, Noah, it's great to see you. Uh, that's what she said. But I'm bummed. She'll be here all week. Typical gratuitous boob shot. Hey, guys, we're on the seven-minute mark. Even though her boobs really aren't nothing to be ogling like a 12-year-old. They're really not that special. I don't think they were that great. Can I just say, why did we need the extra zoom in on the (laughs) all new? (laughs) To make them look so much bigger. It wasn't even like a casual zoom. It was like (laughs) nothing but her tits on the screen. maybe Maybe she was breastfeeding all the kids, including Rodrigo. Oh, yeah. Her boobs were fine. Her yeah. boobs were fine. They were They're fine. Just... I just think they were. It, it wasn't warranted to have the shot of him. I don't think it was. They were that big a deal. I, and if they were, they weren't like huge. They weren't like, you know, close up shot worthy. Uh, but, but what kind of boobs have to be close up shot worthy? I mean, I'll, I'll send you a couple pics. Have. I'll send you a couple pics. Um, <laughs> Good lord. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send a pic of my boobs. <laughs> are they close? Up, are they close that up worthy? Oh, that's going to be the promo shot, guys. <laughs> this is my turn. Yeah, yeah. This, your, this honors boobs. Uh, yeah, right. With the Get hair and everything. <laughs> <laughs> You're always attacking us. Uh, child <laughs> asshole number one, uh, Max Records, uh, comes in the form of a pill popping, anxiety ridden har- kid harboring a dark secret. He's basically a version of an adult Lindsay Lohan. Eight minute mark. Aww. I didn't like no, this. No, no. I liked him a lot. Actually. All right, we'll talk. We're not going to feel Lindsay the dark secret yet. Take her meds. Sometimes I like to dress up and wear mom's makeup, Noah. Uh, child asshole number two comes in the form of a girl uh, who's wearing so much makeup for the entire running time, no less, that she resembles a creepy Annabelle doll from the Conjuring films. Or she looks oh, like the oh. Harajuku girl. The who? A hair, like a Gwen Stefani Harajuku girl. Uh, oh, no. Or the, what's those little uh, those dolls come in the box? I forget, the American girls? Brats. Oh, brats. Oh, yeah, it could be a brat. Yeah. Oh, brat. No, she looks more like a brat doll than the American girl dolls. The American girl dolls don't have any makeup on okay. her. That's a They're brat just- doll. 
I'll go with yeah. that. I understand why this was a good choice. It was, but, it's not a funny choice. It's not. Well, it's I thought of two things while watching this movie. Right. I mean, obviously, it's a piece of shit. Or this movie is super genius, and it's actually a very intellectual think piece on what young children are being shown today as emulated by this specific character and everything that she's throwing out there. I want to be famous. I want to dance on tables. I want to have a good time. I want to wear makeup. I want to go to the club. But she huh. did literally have her makeup. But she did like all a that. Harajuku girl from like, <laughs> remember that? She did. She's like a Kardashian. She's just a I feel like, Kardashian. but I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Like, this is what young people are exposed to every day. This was what shoves down their throats, the Kardashians, all this other shit. And this is the product of that. This is what little girls see. And that's what they want. But how great is it that when he walks into Blythe's room, she has on her little fucking TV, Alyssa Milano's 1988 Teen Steam workout video. Really? Again? Oh, I yeah. thought they like, all it looked just, like Alyssa. It, her, she did a workout video series in 1988, and it is, I have to send you the link to it, because that is gold. Your, bre- <laughs> your, your breath is really flowery. Uh, is that from the perfume this little asshole sprayed in his mouth, or the pussy he ate earlier? Oh, oh, yeah, no. I figured that out. Oh, yeah. Wow, well, that's a that's a technical question. I can ask that. Rodrigo, <laughs> what did I tell you about the fireworks in the house? Uh, child asshole number three is a little Mexican shit stain who should immediately be catapulted back over that border wall once Trump gets a built eleven minute mark. First, it's confusing because it doesn't make any sense to me. She says they just adopted him from El Salvador. (laughs) And then later in the movie, he says, this is my third home. And when you guys get rid of me, you're going to send me somewhere else. So did they fucking get him from El Salvador? Or is this some underground kid, you know, selling? (laughs) I I think they took the inspiration from Modern Family. But she's from... Vietnam. How is that like? No, you no. know, at least I don't get it. I'm uh, no the El Salvador thing. Oh, it? I see, because she's from Colombia. Right. So yeah. Spicy character. I get. It. I'm tr- trying to watch TV with John Benet Ramsey over here. Uh, is anyone under the age oh. of thirty going to get that reference? Wait, can I just Minimark? say why? Why? Yeah, why do you would you say John that? Benet Ramsey. Right? Isn't that? She's dead. That's terrible. Well, I don't promise that she's dead. I, I promise it's not a relevant joke. Like nobody's gonna get it. Like under the like I said, said under age of thirty. Yeah, until you know, you know what? Reference a dead girl. Slater, you got the two red room chicks from The Shining here to see you. And again, we have another uh, lame pop. Love that. Friends, uh, oh okay. Uh, the people under a certain age won't get you. Apparently, anger got it, and we all got it. I think we all got the reference, but a lot of people won't get that one. So basically, the parents leave. Um, they take off, and now these kids and the one kid, that little motherfucker. The little Mexican dude keeps knocking over plants and fucking pottery and all. He starts breaking shit in the house. Is basically my point here, uh, for no reason at all. That's what. It, that's his. That's his jam. I don't understand. Kind of why. a dick right out of the gate. The, all three of them are kind of dicks right out of the gate. But you also have to go ahead and point out that Jonah Hill isn't supposed to go anywhere with the car because of his DUI. But that isn't mentioned here. We don't find that out till later. Yeah, right? No, no. The dad says to him, "I oh, heard you had to right. run in with that's the law, right. and so the cars are off limits to okay. you." All right, we do mention that. I'm like uh, super horny for you. That is a lie, and I brought that in caps for some reason. Hill's character can't be the this stupid. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> keep going on. That and honors her that quite a few times, and it's all lies. It is lies. Yeah, this girlfriend, is, it's supposed a girlfriend, a girl he ate out at the beginning of the movie, so calls horny. him. Yeah, she's at a party, and uh, now she needs him to come. Get me coke. Yeah, get him. Give me yeah, oh, give me coke. She wants him. So be, trashy. But the lie, yeah, to bring coke to the party, to have him pick up cocaine How for her at this could stupid party. Sex possibly be. It's not gonna be that great. Uh, and then the lion says, he said, he says, I don't even know where to get something like that. Um, uh, first of all, guys, you can buy coke from some dude standing outside any 7-Eleven in the uni- in the greater United States. What? Give me more. Yes, you can. Cocaine. Nobody coke. told me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All you're going to hear from anger now is the door slamming and a car <laughs> screeching off into the distance. I, I be back be Jonah back. Hill. I got to run real quick. I got an errand to run. Uh, <laughs> There's one a mile down. Would come back. I wouldn't. Well, this doesn't make any sense because like in this day and age when drugs are literally anywhere, I mean, you can get them pretty. Anybody can get drugs. I mean, literally, you don't have to go that far to get. How do you, how do you think? Go ahead. How do you think Jonah Hill lost all that weight? That probably is drugs. He yeah. started getting all the coke. <laughs> He's got a Jenny uh, oh, Craig addiction. We're going <laughs> We're going on a field trip. Oh, here we go, guys. And thus begins the screenwriting autopilot as the film travels the well-worn route of wacky misadventures in their effort to buy cocaine to impress a woman who's never going to fuck this fat, obnoxious character. 60-minute mark. Uh, is this, he really is that clueless, isn't he? Can't you just jerk off like most people? Yeah. yeah. Jonah Hill. But, he gets, but Jonah Hill gets laid. 
But maybe because he's Jonah Hill. Because he's famous. I don't think I mean, none of us. He was... is the exact thing that he was telling that girl not to become. Yeah, I wouldn't sleep with him. And he's friends with Channing Tatum. Tatum. So. So there's that. Yeah, for hanging with Tatum, you're getting laid. And Leonardo DiCaprio. And you're getting laid there too. Okay, all right. You're answering a lot of questions today. <laughs> right. See, it's like you see the ugly girl in the group of pretty girls. <laughs> he's that guy. <laughs> Where the hell are they driving from when they leave the house in daylight and don't arrive into, in New York City until well after nightfall? Uh, you don't have to drive this far to pick up $150. They're like on fucking Long Island. It's $150 for the Coke. You don't have to drive that far, guys. You don't, like, they must have came from upstate. Well, clearly they were not in the city. Well, I, mean, I know the that. Are... Yeah, I know, but how far out do you got to be to go get Coke? You, I mean, anywhere you can go to White. They had to go into the city to meet her friend Carl, who's, you know, super nice guy. You know, I know, but you don't have to, look, Chris, you can leave your house right now and walk two blocks and, get, and score cocaine. Nobody told me. Why does it seem whenever you have to score coke, it's from somebody named Carl? <laughs> Do not name your kids hey. Carl. No, I, that's the lesson. Yeah. I so am. Anger is actually podcasting <laughs> from her car right now. I'm going to go around to 7 Eleven right now and ask, exactly, is your name yeah. Carl? Anger is actually in the car circling the block right now looking for a 7 Eleven. <laughs> is your name Carl? And a guy named Carl. <laughs> Uh, you also don't have to torture us with inappropriate rap songs playing on the soundtrack during this montage. It's a montage of driving into the city, 17-minute mark. I, what's that song? Anybody got that one? Cocaine montage. Nah. No, driving in the city. Nobody knows that song? Huck Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I sharted. Uh, that's reason enough to turn that car around and drive straight home. Fuck the cocaine. Oh, my God. It's, with it's that clock. Young says they right. sharted yeah. that they even know what that means. If there's four it means you take that kid home okay. and get them into therapy. Guess what? If you're on a road trip and there's four people in the car and one person sharted, guess what? The road trip's over. You turn around, you go. It home. depends on like the oh, oh, degree of the just shark. Kick you out. I mean, this could just be a skid mark <laughs> shart, or it could be like a oh, full right. blown, oh. you know, up you the back. Some- Lead wipes and give that kid yes. a hug. I don't care if it's a skid mark or a full on load. It's shit in your pants. All right, that, it, that, it's over. Well, it's done. I, the point I'm it's making is buying new underwear home. for someone who fully shit their pants. That's nothing. There's just going to be shit on the new underwear. But if it's like a little skid mark, then you could potentially just a little wipe, put on you some. Shout that out. Okay. Oh. If there's any poopy in your pants, you're done. I'm sorry. No, I no, kinda, no. It's no, not. It's a different. It's, it depends on the degree. I mean, I'll tell you one time when my youngest son was like one and a half. We were driving on a road trip and he shit himself so fucking much that it went up his entire back, <laughs> leaked out the sides of his outfit all over the fucking car. Seat. And shit. I had another hour and a half to go. I cleaned him up the best I could with wipes that I had to like tie in a plastic bag. I got where I was going to pick up my husband and then we literally bought a new fucking car seat and a new outfit for him and left that fucking car seat. Yeah, in the, the ground. I done, I've done that oh, too. Oh no, absolutely. It's okay, nothing well. to do with but what that he did. Two, in a tiny it's little that a kid knew to call it a shark. Considering you're a grown ass man hanging out in, a, in the little girl's underwear department, uh, thus ensues an unfunny bit involving Hill's character being mistaken for a pedophile, 19 minute mark. That was awesome. I didn't understand that actually. Because now, because he, she sharted, he has to pull he's over. In the little girl her. underwear section with a random girl who says uh, I got she doesn't that, know. That doesn't make any I sense. I was like, nosy bitch, get the it fuck no away from me. It makes no sense that it's a big deal when it happens. What the sharted thing? Well, yeah, yeah. But this well, is I a com- I... comedy. Yeah, you're right. What's the big deal? He's just he's just getting underwear. All right. Back up. Because now no grown ass man can buy underwear. Actually, for right. Even yeah. if he's like their dad, because everyone thinks they're a perv. I mean, that's sad. I'm sure the Sugar Hill gang was really appreciative of them using their Apache song over this scene because uh, when I think of Hitlers, <laughs> I think of the Sugar Hill gang. I'm sure they really were happy to be associated with a pedophile joke. Uh, how yeah. awesome is that? So that song I did get. Um, I did look it up, but I just wanted to know. I didn't want to make sure it, was, it wasn't the village people. I dropped a bomb, literally. Get it? Get it? 22 minute mark. Now, this little Mexican shit. Always seems to be carrying enough explosives. He's to El take Salvadorian. Out, take out wow. a small army. Like, and where is he keeping it all? He's in fucking pajamas. Was, they don't even have pockets. Exactly. Where is this guy keeping all this C4 explosive? Let me tell you, to blow out a bathroom, a cherry bomb is not going to do that much damage. It will do some. He keeps them in his boots. <laughs> there we go. Maybe it is his boots. He's wearing what those, those um, cowboy, boots. Muck, cowboy boots. Oh, is it cowboy boots? Okay. They're cowboy boots. Follow me. Uh, um, uh, the only director that's allowed to use the Pina Colada song on the soundtrack is James Gunn. 23 minute mark. I don't want to see that again. James Gunn's, uh, nobody's getting this reference at all. I've already said Guardians of the Galaxy, or is this just Guardians like, of the Galaxy? Right. Yeah, yeah. That's the only place funny. it actually worked. 
Well, yeah, this song, this is, so he gets to the, the cocaine guy, Carl, uh, and he has to be taken to Carl inside this fucked up building. And who thought this weird hybrid of Pumping Iron and Scarface sequence would play? This is bizarro, guys. Rule of thumb of comedy is this. If you're scratching your head more than you're laughing, it's not funny. I am so depressed that Sam Rockwell was in this movie. Well, which, <laughs> but oh, I my really, God. I, really I, really I, not I, I had to, like, pause it and give How much money did he get paid to, to be like, in this piece of shit? Through. I'm just saying the, the pumping iron scene and like it's a little bizarro the sequence where he has to go through this whole warehouse and then the end gay up... bodybuilders are they gay I don't even know what's going oh, on come on they're working they out they were shoving this it was up her ass it's a little, it's it was a little... basically a gay stereotype that all these guys are just sitting around fucking each other it it's... was her I mean you have a twink, nobody... you have a twink on roller skates <laughs> escorting him <laughs> no it was a bodybuilding body. section. Her. The guy in the roller skates garb who's yeah. escorting him through here. It's that weird. character was added because uh, Jonah Hill saw like a roller skater on Venice Beach and was like, we got to have that in this movie. Really? That's the I'm not even shitting. Was, oh, come on. That's so much. Like, that's very stereotyped. That's not fucking cool. I'm Carl with a K. Oh, here we go, guys. And then uh, we've been talking about this veteran actor, Sam Rockwell, shows up around the 24 minute mark as a high level drug dealer, essentially doing what Sam Rockwell does, but probably secretly wishing he was in a better film. I think he had fun. He was just him and JB Smoove just like riffing on each other. I don't other. know. Logic oh. point also. Why would you have to go to a high level drug dealer to score a lousy $150 worth of Coke? Because you... that's her friend. Yeah, but you wouldn't Wait. have to do that. No, no high level uh, drug there... dealer's going to do that, though. They would have guard no gifts. Carl's at 7 Eleven? I'm sorry. Is anger? Are you at... right here. Are you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to honk for Carl. No, no, don't, don't honk the horn for Carl. Uh... <laughs> I want to get a Slurpee. Maybe if. <laughs> You'll be back. Uh, we like to package our product artistically. Uh, who wants to bet that this plot point will come back to haunt them? Because apparently his biggest thing is a high-level drug dealer is a package uh, is cocaine and a Faberge egg, a big one, right? Not the dinosaur one. eggs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's good dinosaur. A fake dinosaur. I don't know if they're real or fake. I don't know what the hell it is. But uh, of course they're, they're probably fake. fake. Well, there's a fucking like dinosaur egg plantation in the fucking somewhere. <laughs> Where would they get <laughs> all that? Of course it's fake. It could be real. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, do you know but see, if they're real, why would you film with cocaine? Why wouldn't you fucking hatch a dinosaur if you had a <laughs> real dinosaur egg? That's probably was in the back room. You saw all those weightlifter guys. Who the hell knows what else he has back there? It could be dinosaurs. Yes. It could be velociraptors running around. I don't know. Uh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know CPR? This fake shooting makes little sense uh, since it comes off as more of a uh, more odd than funny, guys. Because uh, JB Smooth, I guess he's a stand-up comedian. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. And so he comes. He's also a writer, and he was a writer on SNL, and he was also on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Wow, he really? He's done all that? So why is he here then? He's here because essentially this is the black white buddy film of 2011. Okay, is it? <laughs> because it's like <laughs> every true. character who's white has to have a black person. Oh, that's to, true. To, like to in real to... life, like in real life. We all got black. Oh, no, but it's just, it's we so We all have to have that to token. <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah, well, I do <laughs> like it when they were. It lives in Colorado. <laughs> it's like actually token. It out. Yeah, it is token. <laughs> in Colorado. I like it South when, they, right. when they, um, <laughs> when they hug. And he's like, you swordfish that motherfucker. I'm like, oh my God. Uh, I find it in the back. So anyway, so th during this scene, he's scoring the Coke and the stupid uh, El Salvadorian kid comes in to use the restroom, of course, because he can't sit in the car the and just follow simple instructions to stay in the car like every other, like the other two kids. But all right. So he goes to use the bathroom and as a result, he still ends up inadvertently taking one of the Fabergé eggs or dinosaur eggs, I'm sorry. And he says, I find it in the bathroom. I find it in But who keeps their product in the bathroom? And it figures they let the Mexicans um... the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm you know, like he's got this whole assembly line shit of like making these Fabergé looking eggs filled with ten thousand dollars worth of coke. Who puts that shit in a bathroom where people are and taking I'm, a shit? Am well, I actually yeah. doing this wrong then? Yeah, anger. Are you are you actually in the Seven Eleven bathroom looking for the coke? Because it, it probably is in there. If you're, yeah, probably I'm not in a Fabergé. Egg. I keep yelling, Carl. <laughs> it's snowing. Uh, why isn't Hill's character not cracked out on cocaine after he had about a pound of it explode on his face? Right. He never gets high at all. Yeah, but there there was a comedy. There's like comedy to be mined from that. That would have been a great scene of just having him jacked if out all, on coke. Or he's like manic. Yeah. High as shit. Yeah, he's manic and he has to go take a dump, you know, like now that just don't run through all the stereo, you know, whatever happens when you're on that much cocaine. But he took a he took a faceful. There's no well, way he'd basically be just recreating his crack scene from uh oh shit. No, I, I don't know, you don't even know <laughs> No, you know Wolf oh, of Wall Jesus. Street. Thank you. The Wolf oh, of Wall okay. Street that he did with Leo you know, when he when Leo gets him to smoke the crack, exactly. he has a fucking freak out. 
You are a douche. Uh, you think Hill would have been more, uh, you think Hill would have more pressing problems to deal with than standing around on a deserted street to berate three asshole kids who didn't even want to go with him in the first place at 31 minute mark. Um, so this, I would have drowned them. As a result, Carl uh, with a K calls him up and says, uh, you know, he wants his money by 11. Uh, apparently, it was 10, apparently, it was 10 grand worth of Coke that he just blew on his face. Uh, in the car, so now he wants that back by 11 car. And now he's just on a street corner, just yelling at these kids, which I didn't think was that cool. Again, the guy's kind of a dick. I don't think he's, he's not, it's not, it's not a funny scene. Um, but he's trying to figure out ways to get $10,000. And this, the, the one kid who has a dark secret we haven't told you yet is just coming up, finds out about a bar mitzvah you're supposed to go to. And of course, bar mitzvah is where you get all the money, right? Because that's where all the, like, you know, the. Those motherfuckers have a lot of cash at their I'm just saying, if he, if he had taken, if he had taken <laughs> Are all you talking about mitzvah, Jewish people? Or Fifty grand. Uh, oh, I'm not being racist, but yeah. At a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah, those kids get like sometimes upwards fifty, sixty what? grand. I'm not oh, shitting yeah, you. Oh yeah, they get. Depends so on yeah. how No, they get more than that. I should have yeah. been Jewish. God damn it. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> this bat mitzvah <laughs> is the best. It's like Jew City out there, and we're the fucking mayor. Oh, uh, excuse um, me. No, I, I'm reading. That's the line for the movie. That's I'm not, the line from the movie. I'm not sure whether to laugh or cringe at this point. 35 minute mark. That was my but point on that one. We found a movie that's more offensive than honor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, just that line. I that's know, a bunch you know, of fucking shit. Like, like, oh, we're Jewish and we're rich, so we can be that way. You know who said that though? It was the, it was the two girls. It was those two uh, the red room girls. No, it's like you know these. It's written by these rich Jewish frat boys, and so they're like, oh. We can say offensive things because we are rich. Uh, I guess so. I, I, it's not. It's kind of a. It's kind of a fucked up line. It's not that funny. Um, well, you know what it reminds me of. Have you guys seen The Night Before? Uh, Seth Rogen. That's uh, Seth Rogen. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it reminds yeah. me a lot of this in terms of like the like so-called like journey. Right. And I don't like, know. They did it a lot better on that movie. Oh, absolutely! This is I love that movie. Talking about this. All right, so we're agreeing that the Jewish jokes didn't quite play. Uh, yeah, I'm not and saying. And why it's is the mom like bawling her her daughter out in the middle of her bat mitzvah? Oh, I thought the I thought the Taj fucking hey. Mahal joke was kind of funny, but um, just it was the other one that I had an issue with. But the Jewish girls being an asshole as usual at the just at these sweet sixteen parties Wait. or bat mitzvah. Or bar mitzvah. I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing She's this. Thirteen. Ah, uh, thirteen, sixteen. It's all it's all legal in if you're Jewish. I'm just saying, bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah is thirteen, and they have a quinceanera. That's fifteen, and then you have sweet sixteen. All right. You gotta keep it everybody, all straight. Everybody got all that. Put your put your fucking dick away. Uh, at least the Salvadorian kid or Mexican get it. Well, Salvadorian kid has the right attitude about this unfunny mess. Uh, Thirty-seven minute mark. He's pissing on the floor of the dance floor. What the hell was that all about? And just say, as a mother of boys, uh, this is uh, normal? that's not that's like your worst nightmare. Oh, that is the worst nightmare. Okay. Yeah, and he's old enough to know better. He I mean, is he's not old like enough. He's two. The guy was lighting fireworks. He, of course, he's old enough to know better. For Christ's sake. Uh, you know that being a celebrity and having a good time is not a real job, right? Um, yeah, it totally is. Duh. Thirty-nine minute mark. What the fuck is that? Of course. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. This is like pre-Kardashian. <laughs> no, this is about Kardashian. This is about. It's 2011. Not the underage ones. Right, but, which right, means, but, like, we're at peak Kardashian right now. Peak, yeah, we oh, are. Please, let us be at peak so it can be over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wish. Uh, it's like actual China. That's racist. 41 minute mark. I don't know where the hell that line even came from in the film. When that, he that, goes that to Chinese town. That's oh, yeah, yeah, you're you right. You need to go to Chinese town. And P.S., the place that he goes to is the same. For premium rush. So he has to go now to, you know, he gets about three grand from... The, the bar mitzvah. He steals it. Basically, he literally steals it off the prize table. And he has the all these prize checks, table. Too. Yeah. Who knows how much well, he, he has. They had like a $50,000. Yeah, he had a lot of money, but only three grand. He had $50,000 right. more. Only three grand in, in cash, the rest are in checks. So, but, so he's going to take that to see the drug dealer at 11 o'clock, and it's Carl uh, in Chinese town. I was surprised Carl didn't say Chink Town, and I'm not trying to be like make a joke. I just thought just because the character would have said that, not, I didn't think he would have been that proper, but okay. that's That would have been shitty. Uh, <laughs> My joint make a U-turn in her ass. Uh, although colorful, J.B. Smooth's monologue about ass rape and Hill's girlfriend only seems to be funny to the screenwriters and the director. 43 minute mark. That was a bizarro sequence. Um, I don't remember that. Did you watch yeah. the unrated version? 
Oh, I, think you I don't know. Maybe Unsane I did. Because that scene was not in the radio. Yeah, I didn't know which really? one you wanted me to watch. Because I watched. Yeah, I didn't either. Wait, I just watched the, the other one, and then I also had the. Oh, other no, one. No, no, I the didn't other know one. there was more. I didn't know there wasn't either because there's no. an R-rated one and an unrated. Oh, maybe oh, I watched that. Watch no, I would. I got it off. Of, I watched it off of a site, quote unquote. So I didn't watch it like. Uh huh. Off of, huh? You I, don't pay. You don't pay to hurt. No, like I just we didn't know, do. You don't just, pay us enough to get no, hurt. Like no, that's, that's bullshit. Yeah, we get. We oh, pay to hurt. There's been times where I paid for the films and you guys didn't because you get to watch it on your stars or your direct TV or bullshit. Oh, oh no, oh, actually, crap, so. who frickity no, who? I paid no. hundreds of dollars a month to watch shitty movies. That's right. This was on a certain site, and I thought I'm like I t- I didn't know there was two versions. I actually did not know. I just I cl- it didn't say unrated. I, I just clicked on it in a place. I so. paid for last week's. See, Griff, I didn't pay for last week. No, I paid for. I didn't, I didn't pay. I didn't pay for Sinister Squad. I did. All right, well, all right. So it evens out. Almost, evens out. I, uh, we all we, we pay in some way, whether it's emotionally or our pain, <laughs> oh. physically. Carl's not at the Seven Eleven hangar. Come back to the house. Get Shut back. up. I, We're gonna find him. I I just need you to be my dad for a day. Film features an uneven blend of comedy and drama, but neither of them seems to work in context to the overall story. 45 minute mark. So now his next solution, basically, Carl says, look, this three grand isn't enough. You owe 7,000 more and you got to what? Midnight? He always keeps giving him more time. We, we just shoot him and it'd be done. But all right. I don't think that dinosaur oh. held that much. No, that wasn't that wasn't 10 grand worth of coke in that. I'm not pretty a, cheap right now. It's super cheap. And that, that even in 2011, that would have been more than the, the going well, for that. Why is Bruce Altman always playing some dickhead? Yep, yep. So no. As soon as you see him on the screen, you know this guy's a fucking asshole. Yeah, that's the pro- Yeah, he. I wish he'd stop doing those type of characters. He's just a professional asshole. He goes to his father who's divorced, you know, divor- the mother, they're divorced, and he goes to his actual father and he's at this nice house and, and you know, and this guy is Bruce Altman. Has a new kid. Yeah, he's got he a new kid. He's a new family oh, now. Doesn't need the old family. Can I just say something? In New York State, which is one of the worst places to get divorced on the planet, how does a rich motherfucker like that get out of paying alimony and child support? Child support. It wouldn't happen. No, it wouldn't happen. No, she she, she should have sued. put a lien on his business, and she would have been getting the money directly. They yeah. don't fuck around. She would have had those diamonds. That's right. I mean, it's worse. It's harder <laughs> than it's harder than California. It's just bullshit, that storyline. Like, if they lived in fucking Illinois or Idaho or some shit, that would have been a valid storyline. Uh, okay. Uh, you're breaking into Dad's store? Why isn't Hill's character in jail by the end of the running time? Stealing jewels is still a felony crime, guys, even if you're stealing from a parent. 47-minute mark. So he takes the keys. He doesn't get the money uh, from his stupid-ass father. Takes the keys to his car, which also has a key ring to, I guess, his father owns a jewelry store, and decides to break into the jewelry store to get uh, jewels to give to... Carl with the K. Not unlike what Miss Anger is doing right Carl. now. She's trying to hock a ring. Carl! <laughs> uh, where's Rodrigo? Uh, how much C4 did this Mexican shit uh, or Salvadorian little jerk have jammed up his ass to detonate that entire jewelry store at the 49 minute mark? That's a much He bigger... had the boot bombs! No, but that you can't do that with cherry bombs, guys. Really? I mean, it's a, that's a production value explosion at that point. I mean, there's no way this kid would have had that much explosive on him. There's you can't... no way blowing up like a smoke no. bomb. Or you know, I'm willing like to suspend this. And, and apparently window. there's no video cameras at this jewelry store. His dad yeah. wasn't alerted immediately <laughs> when the alarm wasn't, the code wasn't being put in correctly. Exactly, yeah, because he has to, he has to figure out the code. Right, there's, I know I'm asking logic questions on this way, but the, the explosion is so huge. There's just no way. It's not even credible at this point. Don't you think the great Muppet caper was a little <laughs> bit more possible? <laughs> Yay. But how racist is this? We have an El Salvadorian uh, Where's the racist? Kid. Oh, this Mexican kid. Come on. He's a South American kid who's blowing shit up and, like, threatening he, everyone. No, like he, a fucking he asshole may as well movie. have a mustache. He was twirling. And a bandana. The and, entire like, time. The movie skated between being, like, nice and trying to teach moral lessons and then this terrible, racist, stereotypical character and 89% of kids black are people. evil. Me. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of the black people I, are apparently I wrote one this. gang together. Like, they all know each other in New York, every black person. Oh, I wrote this down, and I was told that I shouldn't say it, but I'm gonna. Yeah. I fucking would have murdered Rodrigo. And it's not like anybody would have really missed a Ouch. kid adopted from El Salvador. Uh, that's a good point. Right, and True the statement. thing is that they portrayed any kind of adopted or foster kid like that. Well, basically, in the unrated version, 
He says at one point. Now, did you watch that version? What no, I'm just you? saying in the quotes, it's obviously oh. from the unrated version. He says to Rodrigo, I know you're a little kid and I know I'm not supposed to say yeah. this kind of stuff to you, but fuck you. I don't have a problem with that either. So he should have said it. Well, he, at that yeah. point in the movie, no one has no. a problem with this guy saying that guy is a the kid. No, is he's great. an asshole. Slater, you're gay, all right? Boy. Whoa. Film now puts on the brakes to out the first child asshole in a scene that plays like a mean version of an ABC after school special, a uh, 50 minute mark. This is not funny at all. Why would you do this to this kid? Like, just the way he came across it. I, maybe that's the unrated version. I don't know how it came across in the rated, ver- in the rated version, but. No, I thought that version, was I thought sweet. it wasn't bad. You thought this was okay? I thought it was a good conversation between them. This kid was struggling, and he was obviously heartbroken when his friend didn't want to hang yeah, out with him. It was him obvious anymore. that he was in love with him. Yeah, well, that was from the subway scene, though. That was a scene on the train. No, no, but even before that, when in the in the scene where the kid tells him, I don't want to hang out with you, we do nothing, you don't do anything, you just sit in your house, you know, and he's taking all this medication because right. he's crazy. It was obvious to me that he's gay and he's freaked out about it, so he's not, right. he's not well. So I thought that scene was I want to know what I thought par- that was so messed up. I want to know what parent like, would go ahead and take somebody to take medicine because they might be gay. That happens. Oh, my God. Yeah, that happens, happens so much. Especially Are you serious? Here. Yes. Somehow, this character who's driving around town trying to get coke for his girlfriend right. is now going to help him out. This is fucked up. That's you got to go one way or the other with it. You can't be on the fence with these type of comedies. And it wants to go on the fence. It, it, they should have done If it was just done like Bad Santa... It would have been fine. Just go in that direction. Right. And, and just, be done if with you're going to go off, go off. Well, that's all. Cool. But there were some really serious foster children and tendencies and letting a person like explore their sexuality. And it dealt with it all wrong. Yeah. You, and it was you just can have a comedy be, that deals with serious oh, issues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they were like, but showing this was that not the script children. to deal with it. This is not the place or time for that type of deal. Um, well, or they maybe were implying that the parents weren't really like trying. They, like they didn't give a shit. They were self-involved. I mean, they accepted this adult man who clearly wants to fuck the mom was going to come and <laughs> babysit. <laughs> yeah. uh, enough of the pills, okay? Uh, you just can't stop taking medication and expect to be fine. You got to ease yourself off exactly. that juice. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Idiot throws his pills out oh, of the man. car and it goes out. There. But the thing is, if you're taking different kinds of medication, about that shit, that right. fucking little bitch. Oh, okay. But the thing is, you can't throw medication. You, no, you, you couldn't not quit stop. Yeah. Yeah. Not the shit he was on. You can't. You can't I, stop no, it. it doesn't no. matter. No, no matter what you're on, and I, I don't mean to make it deep, but. I hate how movies make it irresponsible when it comes to mental illness and that type of stuff. No, they did. Well, yeah, and they do make it. It's irresponsible. I here. mean, the message I know it's a comedy, is like, but... just be happy with yourself. You don't need all this medication. That's Understandably, great. But, but you have to that's great. You're shut down yeah, with you have a to... professional. Yeah, you got to see somebody. Well, and exactly. Well, like, and you have you to. Know, like, you could want to have low blood pressure well, your yeah, entire life. Just... But no matter what you do, you may have high blood pressure and you may need to take medication for that. That's right. Same thing with depression. The thing that made me really sad was how the kid re- reacted. The fact that his medicine was being thrown away that could make him think differently. Like his right. desperation was just, just so, so sad. He's like, they make me better. Like, no, they don't. No, no. You're no. gay. No, they I... don't. Yeah. Like, nothing makes you better. You just have to Nothing's be wrong with you. you. No, it's got to suck a little dick and you'll be all right. Oh, uh, oh you fucking asshole. <laughs> there we go. This is I, what I tell dare you. you. Oh, no, 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 I can't I... get through one podcast. Thank you, Dora. I'm just. I gotta yeah. pop the serious balloon. We gotta circle it like it's no, this guy. This is a whole different. We understand the situation. You just, and by the way, there are gay men who do not like to suck dick. Oh I, yeah, I yeah. I'm not. Look, I'm not specifying. Okay, hey, but maybe you need to acknowledge that. Uh, what? <laughs> What's happening, my man? Uh, <laughs> oh, great. Now I gotta go into this. Hills Urban speak to the doorman at this urban bar, and I put that in quotes. Uh. Guys, is racist on at least two levels. 54 minute mark. I think they I thought they were in the movie it. Airplane. Right? Does anybody speak jive talk? Oh, no. You can't. You know who can do that film? Airplane. You can't do it outside. Yeah, yeah exactly. Fist bumping. Yeah, airplane. bitches. He, he just thought, honestly, Anger, you can't Jonah do it. Hill, this motherfucking Jonah Hill, because he's about. like the same age as me, essentially, watched Airplane probably as many times as I did and oh, thought, yeah. one day I'm going to fucking work this shit into a movie because it's funny as hell and then just did it. Right now, somewhere in Colorado, Anger's at the 7 Eleven going, See you broad and get a booty act. <laughs> and yeah. lay down and back up. I'm just waiting 
Avengers on the are... corner to see if anybody says that to me now. Oh, and I hope his name is Carl. Give me some slack, Jack. <laughs> well, his name is so <laughs> famous. <laughs> exactly. Give me some slack, Jack. The thing is, like I said, you can get away with, you can't get away with this. It's, it's not funny is what it really is. I understand, he, but he keeps doing it. And I think that's the issue here. He just, he doesn't stop at one or two lines. There's a literally, this is like a two minute scene of these two guys going back and forth. Of his I thing. love like, that's, that's, not, that's Jonah Hill. Is it ever funny, though? It's my favorite no, part it's of the whole movie. No, it's never funny. Oh, that's your favorite? All right, that's Anger's favorite part. Okay, so she liked that. So one, we got one of the four here. Well, uh, it was one I'm of the funnier saying, scenes. Because like, I'm Jonah Hill. I mean, I'm sorry, Poussey fucking you punching are. him in the face has got to be oh, the best thing. I cheered when I saw Samara Wiley in there. I was like, Samara Wiley, what? All right, yeah, she, and she's also, I mean, she's just stalking him throughout the film. She's in the clothing store and she calls and him out in the clothing store. Then she's one of the valets at the party that he, he takes threw up in my grandma's now, ashes. Yeah, he, no, that's yeah. so disgusting. <laughs> he, I need to come back from that. Right. She Hill's was character, amazing. I love her. I don't think she's amazing, but Hill's character keeps running into the same woman uh, that he went to high school with. And as a result of that, she ends up stealing his minivan from a restaurant that they were at where they blew up a bathroom. And so he takes his father's car, but now he finds out where this woman's went, and now woman went, I should say, to get the minivan back that he needs to desperately get back because he borrowed it from the parents of the people he's babysitting. Now that's why we're in the urban bar, and we have the airplane scene, this whole bullshit. Uh, and he says, no, you deserve to punch me in the face. In fact, we all deserve to punch Jonah Hill in the face, 57-minute mark. Uh, like a good right hook from this woman. Jealous. Yes, and uh, he survives the punch, <laughs> and he gets up, and he says, uh, no, I'm, I'm a whole different pussy now. And I've used this line on a couple of occasions. So. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't got you laid. <laughs> That's, no, it really hasn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he does get the car back because of, because he was so cool. And he took a punch to the face and gets the car back, and they're out. And he said, and then the line says, "Why don't you step out of that car, pal? Uh, since when does a hundred and fifty dollars worth of coke and a few diamonds uh, trump taking a wanted criminal on felony charges?" In uh, the police stop him at the hour and two minute I mean, mark. Were these real police? They're taking a fucking selfie with I him know, with the wanted thing, I know. and then they just take that off actually, and snort the coke and that have that the diamonds. That honestly was happen. probably the, the most real thing that actually, out of that yeah, I was film. Say, it what? was true. Oh, that that is the happened. most real thing that ever happened in that. That really happened. I thought the cops are more stupid than they are corrupt. I understand there's corrupt cops, but this is really a dumb scene. Why not both? This is bad. I said, yeah. That happens all the time. That's how anger gets out all her DUIs. That's a corrupt wow. cop. Uh, uh, Jack Daniels okay. borrowed by accident on their car. <laughs> Wait out yourself, anger. Can I just say, how are we supposed <laughs> to believe that Kylie Bunbury, she's the girl that walks up to him while he's grabbing the envelopes and is like, oh, I haven't seen you since freshman year. We sat behind each other and they're like both astronomy oh, she's nerds. adorable. And now she's randomly at the same pool oh, house. Yeah. Apparently she got a ride there in the fucking minivan with everyone else. Right. And then she's like super coming on to him. I mean, like, I'm supposed to believe that this girl was nervous to talk to Jonah Hill. <laughs> I, what, I think he was, I think he was really a girl not have five her because she had beautiful lips. No, she's, she's an attractive like, woman. She's, she's a good looking woman. And she's not that much younger than Jonah Hill, so I'll give it like, up for he's that. He's been, been looking for fucking blowjobs, and she's got like luxurious, puffy lips. Everything he's about like, her is yeah. luxurious. She's unbelievable. Kylie Jenner lips. She's one of the, I'm yeah, telling you, pretty Canada much, is except taking without sucking a shot glass. Canada <laughs> is taking over our televisions and our <laughs> movies with unbelievably beautiful people that they've just yeah, she's been. She's an attractive girl. Back there. And there's no way she'd be attracted to him, but okay. So I wonder, like, I'd bang her. No, I, I don't find necessarily banger. I thought she's an attractive woman, but the point is, like, she's, she's I, she wouldn't be attracted to Hill's character, but all right. No. But in this film, she is, and she keeps, she ends up in the, keeps ending up in the same place. Uh, so the solution now is he's got to he, he leaves that location and already he, he escapes the cops because the cops run off with his diamonds. So he still needs the goddamn money. He decides to go to the party where his so-called quote-unquote girlfriend is, uh, and everybody's gonna show up here. And he's at this fucking party, and, and there's a line that says, "Why are you upside down?" Uh, why is the entire side of the room upside down for that matter? You notice at the hour and three minute mark, that woman who was hanging upside down, but the room's upside down? Can I just say maybe no one else at this party person. brought cocaine? I mean, this is just Should stupid. ask that. All right, maybe I'm asking too many questions. Maybe that was the unrated version. <laughs> That's how bad of a girlfriend uh, she's been. Uh, yeah, she's a ter- Well, she's not a girlfriend. We know that. Uh, you just got fontained. Uh, hey, guys, I'm going to start using my last name as a verb when flushing turds like this mess. You just got knighted. Oh, six minute mark because this guy shows up right on her 
This guy, this guy shows up and he, he ends up... Who got Fontaine? He, no, he, He's Fontaine. You got Fontaine. He's supposed to be an MMA fighter, and we're going right. to believe that Jonah Hill plus oh, three children are going to take down a professional MMA fighter. And they did. Fighter. They did. Oh, I like it. Kid. I liked it when this Bly hit double child. fucking fisted that guy. So yeah, when got... she double punched him in the oh, nut. Oh, was, oh yeah. yeah. Hill gets into a fight she, with And then she blew on him. He gets into a fight with the ex-girlfriend <laughs> of the... With the ex boyfriend of the girl she he wants to fuck so that's who he gets in the fight with and he's an MMA fighter he gets and hill goes down immediately and then it's up to the three kids one bites his ear and the other one uh, you know hits him or something and then he gets hit in the nuts and that's it's a that's really why i actually did laugh at that part when Uh-oh. bly the little girl said flying burrito and he rodrigo the el salvador kid hops on the guy's back and bites the ear like he's fucking mike tyson yeah yeah but why didn't I, she yell mike tyson then that would have made more adorable. sense Kids. Because it's racist, flying burrito. Oh, I get it. Oh, that's actually pretty funny. But kids, uh, fasten your seatbelt uh, because putting young children repeatedly in harm's way is hilarious. Uh, our nine minute mark. Carl with a K and uh, JB Smooth show up at this party and start shooting the walls and shooting at, at these guys and they escape and they get back in the car. Now we got a high street drug chase. See, this is so inconsistent because okay. at one point Sam Rockwell perfectly marksman like shoots the twink skater in the foot, and now apparently can't hit anything. And they can't fucking hit anything. I can't hit. No. Well, yeah, that was a good shot though. He shot him. In the I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like an unbelievable shot. And then here he's just like pew 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 pew. Like you know, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> pew 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 right. pew. So I get into a car chase and both. Pew. pew. Okay. I'm gonna get you. All right. <laughs> yeah, they get into a car. <laughs> Into a car chase, both cars end up crashing, and uh, and then Carl. And what the fuck is with the van filled with like the, all the huge bodybuilders come out and they just start like but smacking they, the minivan. They do. This fight scene reminded me of the fight scene in the George Clooney Batman, where everybody was like, you know, in hyper colors and yeah. like the motorcycles. It was like that level of choreography. It's the a stuff. little bizarro, yeah. It's like the the village people Completely went ridiculous. ape shit. <laughs> we started taking out a van. It's like Grand Theft Auto on Nintendo 64. There you go. Exactly. You don't fuck with a drug dealer. Uh, this is probably the most <laughs> accurate line in the film, guys. This is, he's actually, that was one line where I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't. Because um, he does confront him with a gun and then he escape. Uh, Do I not? And then uh, he escapes and then he Carl. ends up. Get out of the car. Found Carl? I found Carl. <laughs> you found a Carl? <laughs> is it the Carl or just a Carl? <laughs> yeah. You gotta be careful there. He can't just have anybody. Well, you you gotta make got sure it's Carl with a K and not like Carl's yeah. Jr. Yeah, not Carl's Jr. Don't not be a Carl's Jr. Not a hot Carl. Yeah, not. Oh, yeah. You don't want that. You don't want. A, you don't want a hot Carl. It's a Friday night, Seven Eleven. Come I... on. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could, if you can't find a hot Carl at Seven Eleven. Yeah, you're doing you it wrong. Can't find a hot Carl. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't, can't buy underwear. Balls don't fit. Uh, I have the same problem. <laughs> No, you don't. Oh. But I did tell my boyfriend he did. All right. Oh, ouch. All right. All right. We got a couple of jokes going on there. Because uh, they get confronted on the scene, uh, the some playground, I guess. And the guys that were at the bar with the girl who punched him in the face, uh, they all got they all got friendly. And so the girl, the little daughter, little shit with the John Benet Ramsey, drops a dime and calls the girl in the bar. And they show up with their posse to take out Carl. Uh, and let the fat guy escape. Uh, and as a result, there was a cherry bomb scene that got thrown into the guy into the van, right? And then his nuts got JB Smoots uh, got right. His nuts yeah, gets blown off. Which literally got blown. Yeah. And he says, "I know my nuts are on fire. That's how your mama like it." Um, if a cherry bomb explodes in your crotch, guys, chances are you're going to be going directly to the hospital, not making lame jokes at the hour and 14 minute yeah. mark. Yeah, that's not too funny. And not driving um, yourself. Oh, that's the other thing. Thank you. You wouldn't do that either. Um, yeah, you'd be in too much pain. Driving montage of the ride, so they they get escape. <laughs> now they're on the ride home, and the driving montage of the ride home around the hour and fifteen minute mark only serves to pad out the running time. That's a long montage. I don't know what song that was. I don't care at that point, but uh, they go on and on and on. Super long because it's only an eighty-one minute movie. And yeah, it's just, it seems a lot longer. How much of like fucking montages do we have? You know, Jonah Hill was so fat at this point he couldn't like run <laughs> around too much, so they have to have him sitting. He was his own montage. I think they used a, they used like a forklift to get him into the, the van. <laughs> Uh, you know what blithe means? It means joyous, uh, which is the exact opposite of the way I felt after watching this film. Suicidal, I think, would have been a more accurate name for her. <laughs> now, well, it's like these old, again, these touchy-feely scenes that don't belong in this film at Poor all. psycho kids. Maybe Noah will be nice enough to come back and babysit again. God, we hope not. Uh, only one of these we can handle it. Apparently, they know he found out his the woman's uh, 
husband is sleeping with somebody else. No surprise there. And he calls him out of the carpet on that. Debbie. Sh- Deborah. Yeah, he tells him I'm going to be Deborah. watching you. Know, right, Deborah. And as he's leaving, he says, uh, <laughs> there may be a scratch or two on your minivan. <laughs> How the hell was he going to explain the condition of this vehicle to his parents? I mean, uh, to the parents. They didn't even throw in a bonus, like, in the credit scene where the guy's freaking the fuck out about his minivan. But can I just say something? These people live, obviously, in upstate New York. They got a gajillion dollars, and they have a fucking Toyota Sienna. I don't buy that shit. I mean, where are they walking to? We don't. It doesn't really. And, and they've talked about well, this this whole thing. Honor's like, the car like, there. Honor's like... Make it stop. Exactly. You're asking way too many questions. I would have driven that into the East River and just like. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Girlfriend meets up with the boy, you know, with the Jonah Hill, and they walk off, and hopefully he's probably going to get a blowjob after the credits roll. Oh, it's uh, so sweet. She really likes him. I yeah. don't know how she likes him, but guys, it's complete. It's like she, he, right in front of her, he says, oh, it's my girlfriend. I got to take this. Yet she still shows up and is like, oh, you broke up with your girlfriend. Now's my chance. Like, we're supposed to believe that this girl is that desperate for Jonah Hill. I mean, come on. All right, so there you go, folks. That is uh, that is the sitter for this week. Boy, we took it out and played with it a lot longer. We should have. Can we flush it, ladies? Can we please, please flush it? Oh, please, God, for the love of God. Flush it. Flush it real good. I've got to come up with better like stuff for that one. All right, all right, we can do that one. <laughs> consider, consider it flush. Holy cow, that is it for this week. I want to thank my love of the coast cinematic flushers, Midwest movie mogul, Colleen Griffin, and Raging Buddha Bimbo King Norcrest. Great job, as always, ladies. Thank our extended cold flusher this time out. One of the OG cinematic flushers, Chris Film Reviewer, Chris Anger. Nice job, Anger. Thank you so much for sitting in with us. Hey, oh. <laughs> she apparently found Carl in her cocaine, so she's all set for the rest of the evening. Hey, shut yeah. up. <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah, she's super happy, and hopefully uh, you'll be back to join us again. We do appreciate it. Thank you. And we're going to be back to torture you guys again next week with something else. Until then, say goodbye, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Hey, this is Honor Knight, and I want to thank you for listening this week and every week as we flush these turds down our cinematic bowl here in the restroom. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play Music so you don't miss a single episode. You can also follow us on Twitter and use the hashtag PotternFamily, like us on Facebook, circle us up on Google+, and check out all of our episodes at our home restroom on the net, SignalToFury.com. Until next time, remember, we're here to flush it so you don't have to see it. I am Honor Knight, and this has been the award-winning Soiled Restroom Cinema.